Hey there guys, T-Shirt Booth here for GSHelper.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to do countdown timers or count up timers um, in your game um, and this time I'm going to go into some really good detail on what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. I really want you to fully understand uh, everything that's going on. So let's dive right in. The first thing we're going to do is create two attributes. So we're going to hit attribute and create attribute and we're gonna create two real attributes and the reason why we're using real is because we may want to get to tenths of a uh, tenths of a second or hundredths of a second uh, or even thousandths of a second so we need uh, to use a real attribute to get past the decimal points the first attribute we're gonna call start time the next one we're gonna call my timer now most people don't know but there's an internal clock um, and as soon as the game starts, that clock starts running. And it runs as long as you're playing your game, scene to scene. It never, it never resets itself. It's constantly running as long as your game is running. So rather than use the uh, timer behavior, we're going to use the internal clock. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is go into our actor here. And I'm going to put a display text. And I'm going to display the internal clock for you so you can see what's happening. So internal clock is game time. I'll go ahead and change this to black and we'll hit preview. So now, now you can see the clock just keeps going. Um, no matter if you change scenes or not, it'll just continue going. I'll go to scene two and as you can see, it didn't change itself. It just continues on. Go back to scene one and the clock is still running. So we're gonna use this clock for our timer. What we're going to do is we're going to do a change attribute and we're going to change game start time to game time. And what we're doing there is we're recording the time it is when the scene starts. Now we're going to use that information. So we're going to constrain attribute. And we're going to constrain game my timer to game time minus start time. And now I'm going to change the display text to game my timer and hit preview. So you won't notice anything changed here. It started at zero and it's going. The difference being now, when I go to the next scene, it starts back at zero again. So every scene, your clock gets reset without telling it to go back to zero or anything like that. So how do we turn this into a timer? All right, the first thing we're gonna do is go into the constraint attribute where it says game.myTimer, and then it says change to game time minus start time. Well, let's go to the beginning of that and let's say you want a five second timer. Um, you probably want a lot more than that, but just for the sake of us running the clock down, I'm gonna use five seconds. So we use five minus open bracket, and then at the end of the game.time minus game.start time, we're gonna put a close bracket. So now I'll hit preview, and you'll see it started at five, and it's counting down all the way past zero. Okay, so now we want the clock to start at zero, or stop at zero, sorry. So we're simply going to take this constraint attribute and we're going to wrap it in a rule. So select it and hit create rule. And we're going to say when attribute game my timer is greater than zero. Now I'm going to hit preview and it's not going to work. It's just going to stay like that. And the reason is, is the attribute isn't greater than zero, it's already zero. So simply we're just going to change that to one. When I hit preview, it still starts at five and goes down, but now it stops at zero. When the five seconds is done, I'll refresh. Stops at zero. Now you don't have to change that to one and stuff. You can, you know, wrap it in your own rule that says when you know game.start is true, um, 
whatever you want. Um, I use, I like to use the timer trick um, and just change it to one and let it count down itself. Now, a few more things that you may want to do. Um, as you've seen here, there's a lot of digits after the decimal, and you may not want them all. So what we'll do is we'll go into the actor, and in the display text, what you're using to, to show your timer, we'll do some tricks here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to type in P, R, E, C, open bracket, and then you have game dot my timer, and we're going to do comma three, close bracket. Now I'm going to hit preview, and you'll notice we only have three digits after the decimal. And as you can as you can probably imagine, if you change the three to a two, and hit preview, now you only get two digits after the decimal. Now you see how sometimes you get a negative here? What we're going to do is we're going to take this one step further and we're going to go to the beginning of this and we're going to type in A B S open bracket and then at the end of this string we're going to put another close bracket. So it's A B S open bracket P R E C open bracket the attribute you want to display, so it's game.myTimer, comma 2, close bracket, close bracket. And now we hit preview, and now that number can no longer become a negative number. And the reason for that is because we used ABS. And what that does is it turns a negative into a positive no matter what. So you can keep running that clock and you'll never get a negative time. And then now you can create a rule with your timer. So we can say, we'll go rule when attribute game my timer equals zero, and we'll destroy. Hit preview. And hit zero and destroyed. So that's pretty much all you need to know about how you create your own timer. And if you have any questions, like always, post them in the forums, um, post them underneath the, uh, the video, and I do my best to get back to anybody. Um, in the forums, there's hundreds of people that can help you with uh, different options and different things you can do with this. Um, but there's some pretty cool tricks, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video.